It is good to be with you in God's house this morning. We'd like to welcome all of our visitors who are here with us today. It's an honor that you're worshiping with us, and I pray that you would come and be with us again. Our worship service today is Divine Service Setting 1. It begins this morning in the front of your hymnal on page 151, and we will begin that immediately upon conclusion of our opening.
all, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
bad and strong, I will destroy. I will bring them to justice. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 2. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you in the temple, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were strained like sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rise to honor our God in the hearing of his gospel.
Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message this morning comes from our gospel lesson. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Dear friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, think about it. The eternal plan of the immortal God was to die. From before time began, from before even the first word of creation, God knew that the people that he would create would require his own death. God knew that despite the fact that he created us out of his infinite love, that he gave us his entire creation to enjoy, that he walked with us in his eternal presence in the garden to give us comfort and support and joy. He knew that despite all of that, that we would throw it all away. We would exchange the infinite treasure of God for a worthless trinket. And yet, God created us anyway, in love. I've used this illustration before, but we can get a small glimpse of this from some Christian parents. Today, with modern medical equipment, an expecting couple can find out very early a lot about their unborn child. And those tests can show some pretty awful abnormalities. The spirit of our day says to do away with that child, remove it from existence by the murder of abortion, be done with it. Do not put yourself through such hard times. And the world says that is the easy way out. But these Christian parents love that child. Despite the abnormality, despite the great pain and the sacrifice that they know are ahead, the idea never occurs to them to not to bring this life into this world. There is never a moment's consideration for that horrible solution. Because the child is loved. So the child is born. The parents sacrifice. And the child has it. Infinitely more lovingly does our Lord God deal with us. Before we were created, He knew that we would all be horribly deformed. Sin would twist us and curse us spiritually and physically. But like those parents, out of love, God brought us forth out of love. You see, God loves you. God loves me. And God loves all people. God never takes the easy way out when it comes to you or me or anybody. And despite the sinful abnormality of all of His children, God loves us. Despite the great pain and the great suffering that will bring our Heavenly Father by our sinful deformity, there is not one moment of consideration on God's part not to create us. For God is love, and love must have an object. Love cannot exist in a vacuum. Something must be loved, and for God, we are the object of that love. We are loved by God. We are brought forth into God's creation. God sacrifices, and His children have love. We 
heard about that in our text verse today. A life laid down. The good shepherd gives the ultimate care for his sheep by laying down his life for them. From before the creation of the world, this was God's plan. Jesus said of this sacrifice, of his precious life for our salvation, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Before our creation, before the moment of your own conception, our Heavenly Father charged His Son to suffer and die so that we might be saved. We do not deserve this. As a matter of fact, in our sinful condition, we don't even want this. In our sinful state, we want nothing from God except to be left alone. For we are born spiritual enemies of God. And look how vigorously we work to get rid of God. He is out of our schools. He is out of our government. <coughs> he is out of our entertainment. He is out of our society. And if we are honest to admit it, he is out of our daily lives. He is even out of many churches who have replaced him with the spirit of this world. But Jesus tells us in his word today that Jesus knows his own. And they know him. By the power of word and sacrament, Jesus, the good shepherd, calls us out of love, and he makes us his own. The word combined with the water in holy baptism transformed you from a dead sinner into a living child of God and heir of eternity. By God's grace and power and work in holy baptism, we are now in the Good Shepherd's fold, and as we just saw a moment ago, we have nothing to worry about, for He will protect us. For there in His fold, we are here for. His promise is that no one can come and snatch us out of His mighty hand. We are safe, we are protected by His mighty power in His fold. We are protected by Almighty God from all of our enemies. But Jesus said, there are others. There are others, other sheep who were not yet part of his fold. At the time, that meant the Gentiles. Today, it means all people, be they Jew or Gentile, Anyone who has met yet, not yet received entrance into the kingdom of God through the power of the gospel, through holy baptism, through the ministration of Christ's church. What Jesus said of those Gentiles then, he says now to all of those who have yet to receive his grace, I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. If you this morning have yet not been spiritually resurrected, if you have not yet been born anew from above in holy baptism, then Christ is calling you now. He is offering to you right here and right now to become part of his fold. Out of love, God is calling you. Listen to his voice. For Jesus said that the sheep will listen to his voice. What is his voice? His voice is the word of God. The powerful law that condemns us, condemns us of our sinful rebellion, crushes us to despair. But his voice is also the more powerful gospel. 
The gospel of Jesus Christ that justifies us, forgives us, calls us, reconciles us, and gives us faith that saves. The Word gives us Jesus, for Jesus is the Word, and in Jesus we have salvation. That word is being spoken to you right here, right now, wherever you are hearing or listening or seeing this message this morning. The Good Shepherd is calling you through that word right now. For the Good Shepherd has laid down his life for you and for all. For our Good Shepherd did not run when he was confronted by the wolf Satan. He stood his ground. He protected his sheep by going to the cross and dying for you and for me so that the sheep might live. He laid down his life and as he said, it was not taken from him. He gave it. He gave his life freely for you by his authority over life as God, the creator of life. The good shepherd laid down his life out of love for your salvation so that you might have eternal life. And that life he laid down is also for us a foundation. After seeing the risen Lord that Easter evening, after receiving the Holy Spirit from Jesus that evening, and in a more powerful way even than that on Pentecost, Peter went out and preached, and this is what he said. This is Jesus. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given by men by which we must be saved. Jesus doesn't just save you, change you, and then leave you on your own to figure out all the rest by yourself. He lays himself down as a foundation for your faith and for your life. The Jewish leaders whom Peter called that day the builders, that meant that they were supposed to have been building. Building the kingdom of God upon the foundation of the coming Messiah. But then the Messiah came. And they rejected Jesus. They rejected the cornerstone of the kingdom. Because you see, they wanted to build their own kingdom. They wanted to build their own building. Their own temple. And Jesus just didn't fit into that. Well, today you and I are the new builders. We are the new Israel. We are the church. And we have been given the commission to raise the kingdom upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. The church that is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ has God's own promise that even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But anything that calls itself church but does not have its foundation firmly and only upon the teachings of the apostles, which is the word of God and the cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ himself, the foundation by which all things are measured. Any church that builds itself upon that has no promise from God. Well, God does promise the people in those false churches that he will rescue them from such false churches and false teachers if they will but hear his voice and listen and follow him. He promised it, we heard today through the prophet Ezekiel. God says, I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will build up the injured. I will strengthen the weak and the fat and the strong. Those false teachers, God says, I will destroy. Jesus laid down his life as a foundation, as the cornerstone of faith of the kingdom. 
There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Trinity Congregation, Christ is our cornerstone. Our foundation is laid on Him alone. May it always faithfully be. Finally, a life laid down. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers, says John in one of his epistles. Jesus laid down his life by his own authority, by his Father's charge, and by his eternal plan to save us from sin and death and the devil. Jesus has laid down his life as the cornerstone, as the only foundation of his church and the kingdom. He is the good shepherd. We are his redeemed sheep. He did and he does all of this only out of his love for us. And now in loving response, we lay down our lives for the brothers. We are commanded. We are commanded by God to open our hearts to our brothers in need so that the love of God may abide. John says, little children, let us not love in word or talk but in deed and in truth. Our lives are laid down that we believe in the name of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and we love one another just as He has commanded us. For Jesus loves us with a never-ending love. So therefore, may we love others in Christ to His glory alone. For by this we know love, that Jesus laid down his life for us. And in joy we can say to that. Amen. Thanks, Rod. Now may the peace of God who passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Having heard the word of God, brethren, it's found in the tongue, we now confess our Christian faith. In the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all.
for all pastors in Christ, especially our synod president, our district president, our circuit visitor, and our pastors John Jenkins and Carl Becker, that through their preaching and teaching we would be led in the paths of righteousness for the sake of Christ's name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all Christian missionaries, including Reverend Jerry Lawson and his family, and the Federalist family, that they will be faithful in their sharing of the true gospel to the world, that those who are lost in the darkness of sin and false hope may come to the assurance of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ and be brought into the fold of our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For the members of this parish and all Christians everywhere, that we would receive strength to resist sin and temptation in our lives, fearing no evil as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, knowing that our good shepherd is with us to heal and comfort us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For steadfast faith in Jesus Christ, a cheerful hope in his mercy, and sincere love for God and neighbor, let us pray to the Lord. For those whom God has placed in authority over us, especially our president, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they would serve with integrity and honor, always seeking the common good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and suffering, and for all who have requested our prayers, including Pam, Willard, Linda, Cindy, Terry, Chris, Faye, Marcia, Frida, our homebound Jerome and Linda, and all those we now lift up before you in our hearts. That they would be well cared for and restored to health, or given grace to accept their time of tribulation with courage and hope, knowing that they always remain in their good shepherd's loving arms. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who come to the table of their Lord and Shepherd that he has prepared for them this day, that they would receive the holy sacrament of his true body and blood and faith and to the eternal nourishment of their souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for goodness and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives, that we would together with the saints who have gone before us dwell in the house of the Lord forever, let us pray to the Lord. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for us, and who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament on the beginning of page 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord. Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who has sacrificed for us and bore the sin of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with all of the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Son into our flesh, 
to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. You alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when he also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Christ, our Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.